places. Next up is a cross-examination of Joseph Hayes. So Paul Greenery rises and he says his questions will stretch well into tomorrow. Paul Greenery said, during my first stage of questioning, I simply want to understand what your case is. Without challenge, the challenge will come, rest assured. As we've understand it, although you maintain you are not at Fort Linster Road, you accept James Witham shot and killed Ashley Dale. Joseph Pierce says, I do. Paul Green asks, do you accept he must have forced his way into her home and discharged a submachine gun both upstairs and downstairs? Joseph Pierce says, I do. Paul Greenery says, do you agree he must have done that for a reason? Joseph Pierce says, it's hard for me to say that. I don't know what the reason is behind that. Paul Greenery said, you knew the man. Are you entertaining the possibility this was some pure random act of savagery? Or must there have been a reason behind it? Joseph Pierce says, there must have been something like. Paul Greenery says, you personally were not aware of any dispute arising out of the events at Glastonbury. Joseph Pierce says, no, I wasn't, no. Paul Greenery says, it is also your position you were unaware of a more long-standing dispute between now Barry and Lee Harrison. Joseph Pierce says, it wasn't that I was aware. It was just what you've heard from the chatter over the years. Before all this, I've always knew Lee and Branch to be mates. If I haven't seen them for years, then all of a sudden they fell out. I've never really been close with them. I couldn't explain the circumstances between them. Paul Greenery says, is it your position that as August 20th and 21st, you were unaware of a long-standing dispute between now Barry and Lee Harrison, or did you know about it? Joseph Pierce says, I knew about the rumours. I didn't know it actually happened or whether something did happen. That's where I'm at with it. Paul Greenery asks, you had never even heard of Dusty? And Joseph Pierce says, that's true. Until I seen the picture of him. I didn't know what he looked like until I seen it in the depositions. Paul Greenery said, you knew nothing of any problem between Dusty and Sean's Isk? Joseph Pierce says, I was on a holiday with him. If it was that much of a problem, he probably would have told me. It must have been nothing. Paul Greenery said, Sean Zeiss was a close friend of yours. Your position was you didn't know anything about a problem between him and Dusty. Joseph Pierce says, that's right, yeah. Paul Greenery asks, you accept you travelled to the area of Glastonbury on June the 25th? Joseph Pierce says, yeah, that's right. Paul Greenery says, but you didn't actually enter the festival and return the following day? Joseph Pierce says, yeah, that's true. Paul Greenery said, you told us you travelled with five other people, making six of you in total. Joseph Pierce says, that's right. Paul Greenery says, name them. Joseph Pierce says, there's Jason Hughes, there's Morrissey and the girlfriends. Paul Greenery says, two men and two young women. Joseph Pierce says, and Morrissey's brother. Paul Greenery said, you've used the name Morrissey. Please tell us the real names of those people. Joseph Pierce says, I actually don't know them. They're Jason's friends. Jason turned up at my mother's and said, there's a seat here. Do you want to come in? Paul Greenery said, whether you did or didn't go to Glastonbury and who you did or didn't speak to is important. Joseph Pierce says, Jason is my proper mate. He invited me. I went with him. Everyone else is irrelevant. He also says Morrissey's older brother drove him. He goes on to say, I'd only actually met them that day. That's why I don't really know them. Paul Greenery said, you did want to attend the festival. And Joseph Pierce says, I did, yeah. But it's a nightmare trying to get tickets. Paul Greenery said, before you set off, had you made any attempts to get tickets? 
Joseph Pierce says I did. I called trying to get some passes, but it's hard work. Paul Greenry says, who was it you were hoping to see at Glastonbury? Joseph Pierce says, I've been about six times. Every time I've ended up on my own or travelled there on my own. Paul Greenery says, you are making a big effort to go to Glastonbury. I was simply asking who it was you were hoping to see. Joseph Pierce says, was it Kendrick Lamar that year? Paul Greenery says, you tell us. Joseph Pierce says, I never got in. I was just going for the party. Paul Greenery says, while you were there, did you speak to any other defendants in this case? Joseph Pierce says, I did, yeah. I spoke to Sean, Ian and Liv. Paul Greenery said, would it be fair to say you spoke extensively to those three people? Joseph Pierce says, it would, yeah. Paul Greenery says, you did so by telephone. And Joseph Pierce says, that's right, yes. Paul Greenery asks, do you accept on August the 19th? You travelled to Rill in North Wales with Nal Barry and James Witham. Joseph Pierce replies, I do, yes. Paul Greenery says, you did so in the Hyundai. Joseph Pierce says, that's right, yeah. Paul Greenery says, is it your position? You were wholly unaware of any criminal conduct by Mr Witham or Mr Barry that day. Joseph Pierce says, that's right. I've just been picked up and asked, do I want to get out of the house for a few hours? Paul Greenery said, for you, it was a fun day out. Joseph Pierce says, not a fun day out, just getting out for a few hours. Paul Greenery said, if any criminal conduct did occur, it occurred without the slightest knowledge of your part. Joseph Pierce said, David McCain has just come to my house and said, do I want to get out of the house for a few hours? I'm not going to turn that down. You see the phone get rang and you see my phone get rang. Paul Greenery said, you were with those other men in the car and then in real. If they were up to no good, you didn't see any of that. Joseph Pierce says, that's right, yeah. Paul Greenery said, on August the 20th, you accept you went to 267 Pilch Lane, arriving there just before three and staying, albeit, with some trips out until 10 past 10. Is it your position that nothing was said about any dispute or plan to attack? Joseph Pierce says no. Paul Greenery said, and you had not the slightest inkling anything was afoot. Joseph Pierce says, there wasn't. That's right. Paul Greenery said, do you agree? You left 267 Pilch Lane at 10 past 10, and when you did so, you were with Mr Witham. Joseph Pierce says, that's also right. I did, yeah, and I did leave with Witham. Paul Greenery said, and you had intended to walk home. You're nodding your head, but Mr Witham insisted on driving you home. Joseph Pierce says, he was insisting on dropping me off. I'd been in the flat all day for hours, bunged up. I needed the fresh air to walk out, but it never worked out that way. Paul Greenery said, he effectively forced you into getting into the car and being driven there. Joseph Pierce says, that's right, yeah. Paul Greenery says, we know he was planning an attack at Forty Linster Road with a machine gun. He said nothing to you about this plan. Joseph Pierce says, that's right, yeah. Paul Greenery said, you detected nothing about his manner that was out of the ordinary. Joseph Pierce says, nothing at all of his manner. If he was planning an attack on Fort Linster Road, he probably wouldn't have told me anyway. Paul Greenery said, can you help us with any explanation why he first wanted to drive you home? Joseph Pierce said, it wasn't a case of him driving me home. He insisted on dropping me off home. He's come down the stairs as I've got to get out of the flat and insisted to drop me off. Paul Greenery said, You know Mr Witham planned an attack with a machine gun. Notwithstanding his plan, he was so determined to drive you home. Why? Joseph Pierce says, I couldn't tell you why. He seemed fine to me before we left. 
Paul Greenery said. How long would it have taken you to walk home? Joseph Pierce said, about 15 minutes. Paul Greenery said, you would have been home by about 25 past 10, long before the start of the fight. Joseph Pierce says, plenty of time before it, yeah. Paul Greenery said, you'd even seen the ring walk. And Joseph Pierce says, I would have, yeah. Paul Greenery says, would your walk have taken you along Wyndham Avenue, where the car was? Joseph Pierce says, Wyndham Avenue is at the side of the co-op. My house is to the left as you come out of the flat. Paul Greenery says, in any event, even though you wanted to walk home, you got into the car. Joseph Pierce says, that's right, yeah. Paul Greenery said, in the end, Mr Witham didn't drive you straight home. Joseph Pierce says, that's also right, and I wasn't happy. Paul Greenery asks, first of all, he drove you to David McCaig's home. That was in the opposite direction. And Joseph Pierce says, that's right, yeah. Paul Greenery says, did you ask him, James Witham, I want to get home. I wanted to walk. And now you're driving me in the completely wrong direction. Joseph Pierce says, he said, come on, we'll be quick. He's been blind for me over this car for days, a day and a half. Paul Greenery said, you wanted to walk home. He's insisted on driving you and now taking you somewhere which isn't your home. Joseph Pierce says, that's right. Paul Greenery says, when you arrived at David McCaig's flat, was the gate locked so you couldn't get in? Joseph Pierce says, that's right, yeah. Paul Greenery said, you told us on Friday, Mr Wyvern made calls to Mr McCain, didn't he? Joseph Pierce says, on his iPhone, yeah. Paul Greenery says, was it during the course of the journey to Mr McCain's home or after that you ended up in the old swan? Joseph Pierce says, after. Paul Greenery says, then you went to meet Barry Westall in order to buy cannabis. Joseph Pierce says, that's right, yeah. Paul Greenery says, was it you who telephoned Barry Westall? Joseph Pierce says, it was. He doesn't have his phone number. He doesn't know him. Paul Greenery said, how was a number obtained to make that call? Joseph Pierce says, off my phone. Paul Greenery asks, on your account at that stage, after you've been in Old Swan, was your telephone on? Joseph Pierce says it was on aeroplane mode, so yeah, it was still on. Paul Greenery then asked him if he was fuming about the journey. Joseph Pierce says, yeah, I was, I was fuming. I told him, better get me home. Paul Greenery says, why was it you agreed to go somewhere else? Joseph Pierce says, I was getting case for hash. He never had the lad's number. I did. Here's me ringing him to sort it out for him. He's doing me head in, asking me. Paul Greenery said, what would have been a 15 minute walk home had become a car journey of an hour or so. Joseph Pierce says, that's right. That's the whole reason I was insisting on walking home. Paul Greenery says, a simple walk home had taken you much longer than you'd expected. And Joseph Pierce says, definitely. Paul Greenery said, was putting at risk the whole purpose of you going home in the first place, watching the boxing? Joseph Pierce says, that's right. He then showed Joseph Pierce a map of the Roby area. Paul Greenery says, talk us through the journey from Pilch Lane. Joseph Pierce said, when we've come out of the flat, We've come out down all the way past Pilchy Shops. Then went straight down towards Broad Green Hospital under the rocket and onto Broad Green Road. He also agrees they went in and out in a minute on the wrong turn down Glen Road after visiting Mr McCabe's flat. Paul Green said, you were dropped off on Church Lane. Joseph Pierce says, Church Road. Paul Green says, as you walked home, you happened to make your phone active and coincidentally, you were called by Sean Zysk. Joseph Pierce says, I was walking through the entryway on Church Road. Paul Greenery says, at the time of that call, 
You weren't at home yet at nine minutes past 11 p.m. You had not arrived at your home. Had your phone come back on just for that call? Joseph Pierce says, my phone was still on, on aeroplane mode. I use aeroplane mode to save me battery or low battery mode or do not disturb. It's a thing everyone uses to save battery on their phone. Paul Greenery says, we know for a prolonged period your phone was off, save for this two minute period. Joseph Pierce says, I was getting in. I looked at my phone. I seen it was still on aeroplane mode. As I got out of the car, I seen my phone illuminate. I turned it back on. Paul Greenery says, after nine minutes past 11, you walked that 50 yards to your home. Joseph Pierce says, I did, yeah. Paul Greenery says, you had to take the steps you told us about to get your dad's attention. The door had to be opened at the front. All of that happened after nine minutes past 11. Then you went inside the house and spoke to your dad. Joseph Pierce says, yeah, I did. Paul Greenery says, and did you then make your mum a cup of tea? Joseph Pierce says, my dad told me to make my mum a cup of tea. Paul Greenery says, when you went upstairs, did you speak to your mum? And Joseph Pierce said, I did for a little while. Paul Greenery says, then you put your pyjamas on. I did, I put my pyjamas on and come back down, said Joseph Pierce. Paul Greenery says, all of that after you get back to the house. All of that after nine minutes past 11. Joseph Pierce says, yeah, that's right. Paul Greenery says, on Friday, Mr. Wright asked whether you had missed the start of the fight and you asked him to repeat the question to set out his chronology. Ultimately, what you said was that you missed the start. Joseph Pierce says, yeah. Paul Greenery asks, how much of the fight did you miss? Joseph Pierce says, I can't say for certain. I'd be lying if I said what round I was starting watching it in. Paul Greenery says, this fight had been your focus throughout the course of the day. Joseph Pierce says, it hadn't been my focus personally. It was just an event at the weekend. Paul Greenery said, all of your pals had been speaking about it. You decided to go home to share the experience of watching it with your dad. Now, this is really important to see whether your timing remotely fit. During which round did you start to watch that fight? Joseph Pierce says, I'd be lying if I told you. I can't remember. Paul Greenery asks, You returned to 267 Pilch Lane that night together with Mr Witham at 34 minutes past 1 a.m. Joseph Pierce replies and says, I do. Agree, yeah. Paul Greenery says, the man you left with was a man you returned with. And Joseph Pierce says, that's true, yeah. Paul Greenery says, between those times he carried out the killing of Ashley Dale, your position is, you know nothing about that. Joseph Pierce says, that's right, yeah. Paul Greenery says, there was nothing about his demeanour that indicated he had carried out the killing of a woman in her own home. Joseph Pierce says, that's right. Paul Greenery says, he just seems normal. Joseph Pierce says, he's quite quiet anyway. He doesn't really speak much. Paul Greenery says, you accept you were the person who had made arrangements for the Hyundai using the killing to be stored in St. Helens. Joseph Pierce says, I do, yeah. Paul Greenery says, you had not the faintest idea that that vehicle had been used in a crime. Joseph Pierce says, I wouldn't have put that car on Callum Radford's path. No way. Paul Greenery says, Witham has said to you he wanted the car to be fixed. Was Callum Radford a mechanic? Joseph Pierce says he wasn't. Paul Greenery says, why take the car to him in St. Helens rather than to a garage? Joseph Pierce says, that is what I said to him. Why do you want the car to be stored? Paul Greenery says, why take it to St. Helens at all? Joseph Pierce says, I don't know. He just asked me, can I get a place to get it stored? 
I happened to reach out to Callum and I got it stored that way. Paul Greenery said, if what was wanted was a car to be fixed, are you able to offer any explanation why you made arrangements for it to be taken to someone who couldn't fix it? Joseph Pierce said, no, there's no explanation for that. Paul Greenery says, after Witham had carried out the killing, you spent a substantial period of that time in his company. Joseph Pierce says, that's right, yeah, without the knowledge of this terrible thing. Paul Greenery says, you stayed with him in a hotel in St. Helens. Joseph Pierce says, I did, yeah. Paul Greenery says, the intention had been to have a swim, steam and sauna, but those facilities weren't operational. Joseph Pierce says, they were under maintenance. Paul Greenery says, was Mr Witham also interested in going for a swim? Joseph Pierce says, those were his first words to me when he dropped the car off. Do you want to go for a swim, steam and sauna? Paul Greenery says, nonetheless, you stayed for two nights. Joseph Pierce says, that's right, yeah. Paul Greenery says, why didn't you just go home? Joseph Pierce says, Witham asked me to book a room. I ended up booking a second night. Paul Greenery says, on those two nights, in the immediate aftermath of the killing, you shared a room with Witham. Joseph Pierce says, that is right, yeah. Paul Greenery said, did he just seem to be his normal self? Joseph Pierce says, I never really spoke much with him. There was two single beds in there. Paul Greenery says, then you travelled to Scotland with him before travelling back to St Helens and again staying in the same hotel. Later on, having gone back to Scotland, you were arrested in a car with Mr Witham. Joseph Pierce says, yeah, that's also correct. Paul Greenery says, all throughout that period, you had no idea he was the killer. Joseph Pierce says, he couldn't have said anything to bar something like that. Literally, I'm a good judge of character in a person. Obviously, I haven't really been that close with women before. I didn't really know what his demeanour was like in the time that I spent with him. Paul Greenery says, you're a good judge of character, are you? And Joseph Pierce says, that's right, yeah. Paul Greenery says, even if he hadn't said anything, it might be thought he would be worried about being arrested. He didn't detect anything abnormal with his demeanour. Joseph Pierce says, all I thought was odd, he asking me to book hotels in my name. I was in a car crash on the 19th. The car had a bump on it. That was my knowledge of the car. Whatever's gone in those two hours, I haven't been aware of that. He's come to me the next morning with the first thing that I did have knowledge of, the car crash. I can't speak for what's gone on in the two hours apart. I was definitely unaware of that situation. I've been blindsided to this. Paul Greenery says, with him, the gunman, after he's left 267 Pilch Lane and driven you all around, he carries out the shooting. Then he makes the effort to come back to your house so he can come back to Pilch Lane with you. Joseph Pierce says, that's odd. No one knocks on at mine that late. Then Paul Greenery says, then makes you book hotel rooms for him and gets you to arrange the storage he knows he's been involved in the killing. Joseph Pierce says, he refused me to book hotels. He blatantly knew I wasn't anything to do with all of this. I could not have been put in that position by anyone else I was sitting around with at that time. I'm quite an antisocial person. Everything after this, I didn't see no one after this. The only person that's latched onto me after this is with him. I haven't seen no one else in that flat after this. Paul Greenery says, with all of this, making you go back after the shooting, making you book hotels, causing you to travel with him to Scotland, making arrangements for the vehicle. Do you think he was setting you up in some way? Joseph Pierce says, yeah, he used me. I wouldn't be involved in something like this. It's the maddest thing to even sit there and think about. We was all in the flat and there was definitely no plan for anything like this, never mind it actually happening. It's still baffling now. Coming to jail for nine months, I've seen it in my depositions, 
I'm thinking, where has all this come from? It's still baffling now. Paul Greenery then says, you accept over this period of time, a lot was happening around you, connecting with the killing of Ashley Dale. Joseph Pierce says, yeah, I do. Paul Greenery says, but your position is, is there's an innocent explanation for every suspicious circumstance. Joseph Pierce says, that's right, yeah. Paul Greenery says, there appear to be two possibilities. The first is that you're a victim of a series of unfortunate events and coincidences into which you were dragged into innocently. Joseph Pierce says, that's definitely my case, yeah. Paul Greenery says, or you are a barefaced liar, knowingly involved in the events that led to the death of Ashley Dale. Those are the two possibilities. Joseph Pierce says, those are the two possibilities. But my case, it's the first one. Paul Greenley says, when did you find out in an area not far from where you lived that you knew well? When did you discover a young woman had been killed with a machine gun? Joseph Pierce says, when I come home after checking out my hotel, my little sister told me. She said, look at this. Look at what's gone on in the Echo. Paul Greenery says, in the Echo? And Joseph Pierce says, yeah. Paul Greenery says, in the reporting that started at 26 minutes past nine on August 21st, the fact that a Hyundai vehicle had been used featured in the reporting. You must have become aware that such a vehicle was said to have been involved. Joseph Pierce says, can you say that again, please? Paul Greenery says, the reporting that happened over and over again in the days after Ashley Dale's shooting, that including the fact a Hyundai vehicle was believed to be involved. Joseph Pierce says, was this on the internet, the Echo? Paul Greenery said, on everything. Joseph Pierce says, the car wasn't my car. Obviously, I'd seen bits and bobs. I never questioned the car. I was actually in at the time. There was three or four of those cars in Liverpool. The exact same car flying about by ours. That car could have been anyone's car. Obviously now, it's actually Witham's car. Paul Greenery says, When you became aware that Hyundai was involved, didn't you think, goodness me, I wonder if that's the vehicle Witham was in. Joseph Pierce says, Yeah, I did, but it wasn't until I actually seen it. As quick as it got put up, it was as quick as it came down. The car was never really talked about in the news. And that's the end of part one of Paul Greenery versus Joseph Pierce.